Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today I'm going to have a look at MC Tune's Sextant Challenge. Now in this challenge, MC Tune used a phone theodolite app to find the altitude of three stars from an undisclosed location. He then published those sites on his YouTube channel and invited people to find his location and the first person that correctly identified where he took those sites from earned $100 in Bitcoin. It was solved in less than four minutes. Let me show you how that works. Now, in order to solve this problem, for each of the stars, you need to know a couple of key pieces of information. The first one is exactly what time was the site taken. You use that time in a nautical almanac to be able to work out the geographic position of the star, the place on the Earth that the star is directly at zenith over. Second, you need to know the angle to the star, because if the star is at zenith at the geographic position, any other location outside of that geographic position, the star will be at a less than 90 degree angle. Depending on how far it is off of 90 degrees, and the way you find that is you take 90 degrees and subtract the altitude of the star. You multiply that answer by 60 nautical miles, and that tells you how far away you are from the geographic position. So let's go ahead and solve for our geographic position first. Now the way that you calculate the geographic position is that you have to use a nautical almanac to find the position of the star based on a couple of things. Number one, what is the declination of the star? And that is the distance that the star is above or below the equator. That gives you the latitude of the geographic position of the star. Getting the longitude is a little more difficult because that involves the time. Now we're all familiar with something known as the prime meridian. That is the line of longitude that runs directly through Greenwich, England. Now the celestial sphere that surrounds the Earth also has a prime meridian and it is called the point of Aries. Now to find the longitude of the geographic position of the star, what you have to do is you have to compare the prime meridian of the Earth to where the prime meridian of Aries is in the celestial sphere. So for example, if this is the prime meridian of Earth and the prime meridian of Aries is in this direction, we have to know that distance in angular degrees. That is called the Greenwich hour angle to Aries. Now, as the Earth rotates from west to east, that hour angle will change by one degree every four minutes, or 15 degrees per hour. Now, the second part of the calculation is that you have to find the angle between Aries and the star. So, in other words, if the Greenwich hour to Aries is 15 degrees, and the angle from Aries to the star, called the sidereal angle, is another 30 degrees, that means that you are 45 degrees in longitude from Greenwich, England. You have the 15 plus the 30. So you look up your star at a particular time, you find the Greenwich hour angle to Aries, and then you add to that the sidereal hour angle of the star, and that gives you your longitude for your geographic position on Earth. So let's go ahead and have a look at this process using MC Tunes three star sites. Now here's MC Tunes' actual challenge off of his website. You see the sightings of the three stars here. We, we have Procyon, we have Polaris, and we have Arcturus. And there we have the angle to each of those stars. Now those aren't really useful to us unless we know the exact time they were taken. Now he does note that we're at central time in the United States, which is GMT minus five hours. However, that really doesn't narrow it down very well for us we have to know the exact time of the star sites. So what we have to do is we have to actually go down here and download the true star sites. And here we have it. This is the Theodolite app, and it's got the date and the time. It was 3-28-2022, and it's at 0, 022 minutes 33 seconds. Now what we have to do is we have to calculate the geographic position of Arcturus. Now we're going to put this into an iPhone app called Celestial Navigation to kind of do that math for us and help us out a little bit. But we're just going to use the raw data to plot our own location rather than have the application do it for us. 
So here we've gone ahead and put our data into our, my celestial navigation application. So as you see, our presumed location is 45 degrees north, 88 degrees west. Our body is Arcturus, and the altitude of Arcturus is 45 degrees, 42 minutes, which is 45.7 degrees. Now, no index error nor any movement was noted in the challenge, so I've got them both down as zero. And as you can see, the time is 328 at 0, 022.33 hours. And since local time is GMT minus 5, I've converted that to 522 and 33 seconds AM. Now let's go ahead and calculate where our GP of the star is. We've got our presumed latitude and longitude on the top here. To find the longitude, what we need to do is we need to combine the Greenwich hour to Aries, which is based on the time. And as you can see here, that's listed as the vernal equinox and it's 266 degrees, 15 minutes. To that, we add the sidereal hour angle of Arcturus, and that's listed under the sidereal hour angle on the top line here, and that's 145 degrees, 49.7 minutes. You add those both together and subtract 360 because it's more than 360, and it gives you the degrees of longitude west. So the GP of Arcturus will be at 19 degrees, 3.9 minutes north, and then it'll be at 52 degrees, 4.8 minutes west. So let's put that on Google Earth. And there is our position. So now what we do is we have to take a ruler tool, make sure it's set for nautical miles, and change it from a line to a circle. And then we want to draw a circle around that point, which will be our circle of equal altitude. So how big is that circle going to be? Now our altitude of the star was 45.7 degrees. If you subtract that from 90, you get 44.3 degrees. Multiply that by 60 nautical miles, you get 2658 nautical miles. That's the radius of our circle of equal altitude. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's 20, 2831, 2762, 26, 58, right there. Cool. We're going to save that as Arcturus. Now, MC Tunes location is somewhere on that circle. Now, we're going to repeat the process for the other two star readings, doing the exact same thing, and we're going to come up with this true location. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, here we've done the same thing with Polaris. This second circle right here is the circle of equal altitude for Polaris. That intersects the first circle in two locations. One is out here, uh, just north of Spain. The other is here in Minnesota. Now, since MC Tune is from Minnesota, I'm thinking it's probably that one. But let's go ahead and do the third one. Well, there is our final circle of equal altitude around Procyon. Let's go ahead and see where they all come together. Looking like about right there. So if we zoom in here a little bit, MC Tune is somewhere in this little triangle right here. And if we look at the center of that triangle, that is latitude 46.54 degrees north longitude 93.99 degrees west. Well, that's my guess, so go ahead and take it from there, MC.